Well, sir, the evening meal has been over only a little while, as our scene opens now. And here in the, of the living room of the small house, halfway up in the next block, we find all our friends assembled. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook are seated side by side in the Davenport with sections of the newspaper. But they aren't reading at the moment, being requested by their small son to listen to a thrilling passage from our third Lieutenant Clinton Stanley story. The handsome young officer regarded the band of counterfeiting, coffee ground fortune tellers with the utmost contempt. You are nothing but a band of counterfeiting, coffee ground fortune tellers, he taunted, and he threw a protecting arm around Lady Margaret. The beautiful woman coquettishly extricated herself from his affectionate grasp and trotted off a few paces. I love you, sang out Sir Lieutenant Stanley. I love you too, caroled his sweetheart. And even the heart of the scoundrelly band of counter... I don't believe I want to hear anymore. Me neither. Okay. Sir Lieutenant Stanley's a halfway. So is Lady Margaret. Okay, people. Uh... We got anything on the docket particularly tomorrow evening, Kitty? Tomorrow evening? That's what I know of. Why? Why? Well, this Wendy. What's this now? It ain't a belly with Wendy. Somebody's coming here? Well, maybe if it's okay with you. Who's coming? Perhaps somebody nice. Perhaps someone you like. Uh-huh. I can tell by the way you're acting it's someone I like. Oh, what's the discussion, people? Malto is my book. Old third lieutenant put the kibosh on the counter pities, did he? Seen to it that every last one of them got their just desserts. Ice cream and cake apple. <laughs> Beg pardon? You said the counterfeiters got their just desserts. I hope the desserts were ice cream and cake. <laughs> oh, I know it's not much of a joke. What's the discussion? Yes, what is it? Who's fixing us tomorrow night? Robert and Robert Haynes from Hoopston, Illinois? Nope. Why Why Flirts from Nebraska? Nope. Well, who? It's somebody like that. Here's the gift. Alf Mushikin. You're getting warm. You're getting warm. Why, I, I, why, Steber? Who's the third in remaining barber at the Butterhouse Hotel Barbershop? Stacy Alf, huh? He's coming. Well, we got nobody else coming, have we? We got no plans for tomorrow night. What's Stacy Alf coming for? Stacy. Do you remember last week, Stacy all of a sudden turning from right-handed to left-handed? No. Well, sure you do. It was the afternoon we were going to clean the attic, and I was writing a special magazine article. All but... right, I remember. What about it? Say, during the time that has elapsed, since Stacy Yop suddenly turned from right-handed to left-handed, the phenomenon has repeated itself no less than 60 or 70 times. He went back to right-handed again? He went back to right-handed and then back to left-handed, and then back to right-handed and back to left-handed. And so on and so forth and so on and so forth until it's enough to make a person's head swim. Can he change himself into a right-handed fella or a left-handed fella whenever he feels like changing? No, he can't. The switch from right-handed to left-handed is sudden, involuntary, and unexpected. He may be right-handed fella at breakfast and then turn into a left-handed fella along about noon. It's most baffling. Science tells this kiddo that people are right-handed or left-handed depending on the whereabouts in their skull of their medulla and their oblongata are located. So you explained that the other day. Oh, did I? Yeah. Did you understand it? Sure. If your medulla is on the right side of your skull and your oblongata on the left side of your skull, you'll be right-handed. The medulla and oblongata, of course, are the parts of the human brain. Whee! Three parts? Nothing. What's the op coming here for? I'm getting around to that. Good. The converse of what I've just described naturally is true. If a person's medulla is situated on the left side of their skull and their oblongata on the right side I of their skull... I know all about that. Are you sure you do? What's the op coming here for? Well, I'll tell you. Good. Dr. Fowler Lee Sacker, a distinguished Montana physician, surgeon, lecturer, and brain specialist, arrives in the city tomorrow. That's so? Dr. Socker is to deliver a talk at the Butler House Hotel addressing the members of the Better Business Friends Club. Yeah, I read about that in the paper. Sure. These days, Rush read about it in the paper. Congratulations, Rush. Oh, I read stuff in the paper. This particular item... I'm I still know. curious about good old right-handed Stacy and why he's visiting us tomorrow night. You can't put two and two together? No. Stacy wishes to consult with Dr. Socker. Oh, in all probability, Dr. Sockers will have sound theories about Stacy's astounding condition. He may be able to put his finger on the reason for Stacy's being right-handed one minute and left-handed the next. Since Dr. Sockers is coming too, then? Yes, and we may well be proud to admit him to our home. 
He's a famous Montana physician, lecturer, surgeon, teacher, brain specialist, and polo player. The four of us can get up a game of polo. <laughs> Five of us. I'll be on deck. You are witty, right? <laughs> Not me. Mom's a witty one. If Stacy out feels like he ought to see a doctor, why don't he go see a doctor? Why did he drag the doctor here? Stacy Yapstade is a candidate for membership in the lodge, and I may add, a very good friend. That's all fine and wonderful. But I still want to ask my question. Why did he drag the doctor here? If I felt like I ought to consult the doctor, I'd go consult the doctor. I wouldn't tell the doctor to meet me at Ruthie Stembottom's house or someplace. You don't catch on why I've invited Stacy to bring Dr. Sockers here? Uh-uh. You might if you thought a moment. Uh-uh. I got a halfway idea, Gov. A humorous one, no doubt. No, on the level. What is your halfway idea? Well, this Dr. Sockers is traveling around the country and naturally has no office in town. You can't go consult a doctor in his office if he's got no office. Good, Rush. Good. That's an unwritten law. Fine, clear thinking. Oh, nothing wonderful. You see, Saint? Not particularly. I can see why Stacy don't visit the doctor at his office. The doctor have a no office. But why don't the doctor visit Stacy? You can puzzle out the answer to that question, Stacy. I don't believe I'll bother. Stacy resides in the Bright Kentucky Hotel. Well? Don't you grasp the point? Uh Uh-oh. I bet you do, Rich. No, I don't. Not this trip. The Bright Kentucky Hotel is no place to consult a doctor. Why Why not? The noise. Freight trains, passenger trains, work trains, and switch engines roar past there every minute of the day and night. The furniture rattles, and the air is full of smoke, and cinders constantly pound against the window pane and everything else. Dr. Suckers wouldn't be able to hear himself think. No, the Bright Kentucky Hotel is no place to consult a physician. Why, if Dr. Suckers attempted to take Stacy's temperature, the, the thermometer would shoot right out of his mouth from the vibration. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that true, Harry? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is at that. And Stacy's room is on the railroad track side of the building to boot, isn't it? Yes. It's impossible to carry on a conversation in a room that's on the railroad track side of the Bright Kentucky Hotel. Everybody has to yell their head off, and then you can't understand each other. It would be beneath the dignity of a distinguished man like Dr. Fowler V. Sockers to yell his head off. Yeah, I guess so. So now you have the picture in clear perspective, Stacy. In order for Stacy Yop to consult with this famous physician, a meeting place must be provided. As Stacy Yop's good friend and well-wisher, I have offered my home as the meeting place. I'm sure you can have no real objection. <laughs> Besides doing Stacy a good turn, I also have a scientific interest in the matter. This predicament is baffling and bewildering. I'm anxious to hear Dr. Sucker's diagnosis. What is it exactly that ails him, Stacy? One minute he's right-handed, the next minute he's left-handed. Precisely. Well, that don't sound so terrible serious to me. I bet you'd find it upsetting. Not if I felt all right other ways. The thing of it is, Dave, if your medulla is located on the right side of your skull and your oblongata is located on the left side of your skull, we may safely assume that you are... Left-handed. Right-handed. All right, right-handed. Don't go into that oblongata trash anymore. What is there in particular about this business that bothers Stacy? Well, take today. Yeah. Normally right-handed... Stacy found himself at the breakfast table this morning holding his spoon in his left hand. Did that scare him? Well, it didn't exactly scare him, but it made him wonder if his medulla had switched places with his oblongata during the night to where his medulla had somehow worked its way over to the left side. All of right, him. go on with your story. And as I say, he found himself holding his spoon in his left hand. Uh-huh. Two hours later, while at work in the Butler House Hotel barber shop. He was shaving a client and was astounded and agitated to notice that he was holding the razor in his right hand. Oh. He'd gone back to right-handed in the short space of two hours. Oh, hey, Gov, I bet he's just like Vernon Pagel. In what way? In baseball, Vernon bats either left-handed or right-handed, just as he decides. Also, he can throw right-handed or left-handed. The scientific term for that rush is ambidextrous. Is it? Your chum, Vernon Pagels, is ambidextrous. Your chum, Stacy Yop, is ambidextrous. Not at all. No? Not at all. Shall I tell you why? Okay. During moments when Stacy Yop is right-handed, his spoon or his fork or his razor or whatever he's holding feels awkward and unwieldy in his left hand. During moments when he's left-handed, articles in his right hand feel awkward and unwieldy. Uh-huh. Do you see? Uh-huh. And here is the clincher. Mm-hmm. This morning, at breakfast, Stacy found himself holding his spoon in his left hand. 
At dinner this noon, he found himself holding his spoon in his right hand. And at supper tonight, yes, he found himself holding his spoon. Yes, in either hand. He had two spoons? He had two spoons. He was eating with both hands? He was eating with both hands. My goodness. Stacy Yop was left-handed and right-handed all at the same time. Gee whiz. Yes, gee whiz. Do you wonder he wishes to consult Dr. Fowler V. Suckers? Oh, goodness sake. What is it, Stacy? Uh, nothing. Well, neighbors, so ends today's visit at the small house halfway up in the next block. But it seems like something's always going on at the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Victor Cook. And I'll be waiting there to open the door for you when you drop in on Bacon Save the next time. This is Ed Hurley, he's speaking.